All right, so this is the second part in a two-part series on friction. And in the first part, what we did is we essentially had a force P that was, you know, parallel to this surface here. Well, now all I've done is I've taken that force P and put it horizontal to the, to, you know, the horizontal surface. So now this makes the problem a little bit different. It's a little, it, it makes it a little bit more interesting in some ways. So what I did is, you know, I, I, I sort of took from the previous example and, and, and I went ahead and drew the free, free body diagram, right? And the only thing that I've changed so far in this free body diagram is this force P, right? So now this force is horizontal, where in the previous example was, you know, it was uh, parallel to the plane. So in this case, now, now when we go to find components, right? Well, we can already find WX and, and WY. We already have those. So if you wanna know how to do those, maybe go watch the first video. But I'm just gonna copy those down here and we'll see them now. All right, so here we have WX, right? Was WX is, you know, W, this, this, total, this total weight here times the sine of 20. So we're doing vector components again. And WY is, you know, W, uh, w times the cosine of 20. So if you want a little bit more explanation, go check out part one. So what I wanna do now is I wanna take a look at this P, right? Because P also has components now because it's an, an angle to our, our local coordinate system here. So we aligned our coordinate system up with the surface of the plane and this p now is going to be at some you know angle to the well at some angle to the the local coordinate system so we're going to have you know px and we're going to have you know p y here, right? So we have two new components that we need to deal with. And this adds a little bit of, of complexity. So if we know this angle is 20 degrees just by alternate interior angles, right? Now we can write our components for px and py. So let's do that. So px is gonna equal, in this case, p times the cosine of 20. And py is going to equal p times the sine of 20. Right, so again, take note here, the x is not always cosine or sine, you know, it, they, they change back and forth here depending on where the angle is. So in this case, this is what we know, but we don't know p yet. So that's what we're trying to solve for. We can't take this any further at this point until, you know, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go and we'll, we found our components as best we could. And now we're gonna go and apply our equations of equilibrium. So let's do that. So to apply the equations of equilibrium, first we'll write, well, let's start with some of the forces in the y direction. That's what we did on the previous problem. So some of the forces in the y direction equals zero. We'll take any forces that are going up relative to this, to this you know, local, local y and call those positive. So, you know, the normal forces going up, we'll call that positive minus, what do we have? Minus py minus wy equals zero. Okay, and what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually gonna substitute in what I know. So I know that the normal force is like minus, well, P sine 20 minus, you know, WY in this case, we know that's 93.97 pounds. So let's just put the number in. Okay, so that's one, one thing we know. But we still don't know P and we still don't know N. Okay, so let's keep moving. Well, if we keep moving we, and we say, well, what about some of the forces in the X direction equals zero? Okay, if we do that, what do we have? Well, we know that, um, again, we're gonna write our forces here and this, you know, if PX going up the plane, we have, you know, minus WX coming down the plane and we also have minus the friction force opposing action. So all this is gonna equal zero. So I'm gonna rearrange this. So I'm gonna have minus the friction force plus PX you know, minus WX. And one of the reasons I'm doing that is to get into the same order here. And because what we're gonna end up with is a simultaneous set of equations that we'll need to solve. And if you remember, the force of the friction is going to equal mu times N. So let's write that in. So we're gonna have minus mu times N, right? Plus PX and PX in this case is gonna be P times the cosine of 20. And then we're gonna say minus WX and WX here was 34 0.20 pounds, okay? So now what we end up with, which is kind of cool, we end up with, you know, a system of two equations. So we have equation one, equation two, with two unknowns, n and p, right? Everything else in these two equations is known. So what we can do is we can go ahead and solve those. So you can do it a, a number of different ways. You could do elimination, substitution. I'm just gonna do uh, substitution here. So I'm gonna take our, you know, this equation and I'm gonna write it as actually, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll just write it right here. So what I'll say is, well, I know that N has to equal, what, P sine 20 
degrees, you know, plus 93.97 pounds. And once I know that, I can take it and I can substitute it in here, and now I can solve. So let's go ahead and do that. Where now, what, what do we get? We get, so we get minus u times p sine 20 plus 93.97, right? And then we have to finish the rest of the equation. So we have like a plus, you know, p cosine 20 and minus 34.20 pounds, okay? So this is just plugging in, and, and now, again, I'm gonna start, you know, solving here, but I, you know, I can distribute uh, this mu out, and for mu, I'm gonna put in uh, 0.4 now, so I know this is, you know, minus 0 0.4 times P sine 20, minus 0 0.4 times 93.97, you know, and then we can still have plus p cosine 20 uh, minus 34.20 pounds. And we can't forget that these equal zero, okay? So we gotta remember that. Okay, so we get those written in. And now, what do we do next? Well, this is good because we have one equation. It's just an ugly equation, right? We have one equation with P. It's just kind of ugly, a lot of ugly numbers. So let's go back and let's just, you know, go ahead and solve. So here, what I might do is I might factor this P out. So when I factor P out, I'm gonna get, you know, P times minus 0 0.4 times the sine of 20. You know, and again, I'm gonna factor out P here and I'm gonna just say, you know, plus the cosine of 20. And then what do we have left? Well, we have a bunch of numbers left. And if I take these numbers, well, 0 0.4 times 93.97, we, we learned in the last one that that is going to be uh, 37, you know, 0.59. So let's, you know, 37.59 and 34.20. I'm gonna add those together, move them to the other side, and I'm gonna get uh, 71.79 pounds. Okay, so when we have that, now to solve for P, what we get is, we get P equals 70, 6.33 pounds. So again, we divide the 71.79 by this whole you know, sum here, and we get our final answer. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense, but you know, what it does is it makes us think, well, when this force, let, let's think big picture for a second. When this force, right, in, the, in part one of this you know, problem in, in the previous video, uh, right, so this force originally was, was parallel to the plane. We got a force required of 71.79 to move it up the, you know, to move the, the weight up the plane. Well, does it make sense that we're gonna need a little bit more to go up the plane? And, and I would say it does because now what this force is doing is it's also, you know, pushing down, which is increasing the normal force, increasing the friction force. So we need a little bit more force in this x direction to make it go up the plane. So, hey, I hope that makes some sense. I hope it helps. And what we're doing here, you know, just as a summary again, what we did is we drew our free body diagram, right? We, we found our components. We went through, we applied our equations of equilibrium. We used friction, you know, the friction force equals mu times the normal force. But here, really, the crux of this was we needed to you, you essentially solve a simultaneous set of equations. Hey, so I hope that helps. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. But otherwise, until next time, I hope you keep working hard and keep moving onward and upward.